Now, I want to ask you a very, very, very serious question about today's housing market and let me know what you think. But what would happen if everybody who bought their home over the last two years ended up going underwater and never saw their home actually be worth what they paid for it? What would exactly happen? Because over the last couple of years, people have been buying houses at record high prices. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, market genius, real estate always goes up. And to be honest, historically, if you're looking back from the beginning of time until now, yes, real estate always does go up. But just what if, what if this time around, prices went too high and those people who bought over the last two years ultimately ended up buying at the wrong time, meaning that if they wanted to sell, they would either have to do a short sale or have to wait. What do you think will happen? Now, when it comes to investing, that's in stocks, real estate, your time, or anything that you put something into and want to get something out of, I've got four simple rules that I follow, and I'm going to teach you about those rules with investing that you can use to buy or sell anything in the future. Rule number one, you've got to understand that you always, 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 always buy low and sell high. You never buy high and sell low. You never really want to buy anything high because obviously you're overpaying. So buy low, sell high. That's rule number one. Rule number two is similar to it, but you need to understand what buying low is and what selling high is. So rule number one was buy low, sell high. Rule number two is understanding the difference between the two. Because in your mind, you can have it wrapped up to like, okay, I'm going to buy low, I'm going to sell high. But if you don't understand what is low and what is high, then you're going to be in for quite a bit of trouble when it comes to any investment. Rule number three, why is something low and what makes something high when it comes to pricing? Why is it low? Why is it high? For example, if you go outside, I'm sure we all can tell, like especially here in Metro Atlanta, that it's a super hot day outside right now. But why is it that you need to be able to understand that it's hot because it's the first of august and it's the summertime and our location is in the south closer to the equator than somewhere like michigan for example understanding why something is low and why something is high is also crucial to your investing journey and rule number four is how do you know something is low and something is high and you have to use tools like in our previous example like a thermometer, like understanding the temperature of something will give you definitive proof of whether something is low or whether something is high. Those are four investment rules and strategies that you need to know. And what a lot of people have failed at over the last couple of years is truly understanding whether this housing market is low or it's high. Because there are a lot of people that are thinking like, hey, if I buy a house right now, 10 years later, it will be $800,000 or a million dollars. Only time will tell, but in my opinion, and what I'm gonna to talk to you about in today's video is understanding low, high, and also what is gonna happen over the next coming months in 2024 when it comes to real estate from a realtor. But before we take a deep dive into that, you already know what time it is, Genius Crew. Drop the track. Welcome back. This is Market Genius. You already know what time it is. We're going to dive deep into this real estate market. Our price is going to continue to go up. Are they going to come down? And what's going to happen when rates do come down or if they do come down, right? It's anybody's guess. But be sure to like, share, subscribe, get this video out to as many people as possible because at the end of the day, there are so many professionals in my respective industry that always just say, bye, 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 bye. And at the end of the day, that may not be right for you. So we're going to talk about when exactly you should buy based off of understanding what is low and what is high. So let's go ahead and jump into some market statistics so you understand where we are today and where we're trending towards. And of course, to do that, we're going to jump into the Georgia MLS statistics so we can talk about exactly what's going on in Metro Atlanta. So as you see here, we have a huge change in the amount of homes 
that are being sold compared to last year, almost a 15% decrease. Remember, we always talk about real estate is based off of supply and demand, supply and demand. So we see that demand has dropped significantly. Most of this is because of rates, but you know, like I tell all of my clients when they're selling their houses, that a lot of people just don't have the money to be able to afford the price you're asking or the monthly payment that it's gonna take to maintain that house or to be able to keep it over the course of, you know, uh, 30 years or however long they're going to be staying. Another thing I want to point out to you is residential inventory. So residential inventory has grown 60%. So use your thinking caps, genius crew. If inventory has grown 60%, but residential units sold has dropped 15%, then what do you think is actually going to happen next? Of course, pricing has to follow, right? This is just simple economics, simple rules of the market. More supply, less demand, prices have to end up meeting in the middle. And to give you a further look, right? Of course, sales price has gone up significantly since 2020, going up from $250,000 in terms of median sales price here for Metro Atlanta, all the way up to $414,000, which is almost a $200,000 increase over just you know four or five years. So that's amazing to see right there. But what I wanna point you two is this consistent downtrend of the amount of homes selling you had it peak over here and this is back in july of 2020 we had our biggest month in terms of residential units sold at 10,273 homes so since then we have been on a consistent downtrend now if you're all in investing you gotta you gotta understand that a downtrend consists of lower lows and lower highs. So as you see, we have a low here in 2021 of 6,000, and then we also have another lower high, all right, in June of 2021. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Now, which in my prediction, I feel like this fall, based on the numbers, we're gonna see another lower, lower when it comes to this housing market. And once again, if we look at the amount of homes sold year over year, 2024 is this pink line, which it has been an abysmal year for real estate compared to the previous years. But if that's not enough information for you, let's go ahead and jump into an article from Redfin that describes what this housing market is facing right now. And here you have it. Redfin reports that home buyers aren't yet reacting to lower mortgage rates, with pending sales posting biggest year over year decline in over nine months. Now let's talk about rates for a second. All right. Rates are something that is misunderstood by the general public quite a bit. Now, the reason why they increase rates is when the economy is doing well. So over the past couple of years, had all this great economic data coming out that people were having you know, steady job growth, wage growth, homes were selling. So what the Fed did was raise interest rates, right? Now, what we're seeing right now, and I don't know if you watch the Federal Reserve chairman speak yesterday, but what we're seeing right now is that the economy isn't really doing so well. I'm sure a lot of you all can feel it. Consumers have pulled back on a lot of spending. As you see here, the amount of homes being sold has also decreased significantly. And so what they're going to do is drop rates. Now, there's been a misconception going around in the real estate industry that when rates drop, that people are going to start buying again. That may be true for some people, but for the majority of America and the majority of home buyers that are on the sidelines, rates dropping won't mean that people will immediately start buying again. What it will mean is that some people have lost jobs. Some people have just reached the point to where they can't spend anymore with like credit card debt being at all time highs. So rates dropping doesn't always mean that people are going to pick up and start buying again. It actually means that the economy is not doing well and that they have to drop rates to kind of entice people to get into the market. But what I'm predicting to happen with this real estate market is that even when rates drop, there's still going to be a lagging effect to when people start actually buying real estate again. And so if you're sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out, well, Mark, when is it actually a good time to buy real estate? Remember, I talked about the four investment rules that I keep and that I think you should adopt too when it comes to buying low and selling high. I think that the perfect time to buy real estate 
is when mortgage rates go as low as they're going to go. Here's the reason why. If you're buying real estate or if you're buying any investment, right, you want to get in before demand increases. Now, while rates are dropping, you are still going to see demand decreasing. Why is that? Because when rates are dropping, more people are going to put their homes on the market. And remember, it's a supply and demand thing. Don't believe the hype of, you know, there are so many people without starter homes that, you know, uh, when we get more inventory, people are just going to start buying like crazy. That's not true. People are going to buy when the economic conditions allow them to. And because they're dropping rates, we're seeing that economic conditions are not good for a lot of organizations, a lot of people uh, just here in the United States. So me personally, now I don't know what you want to do. I mean, it's totally up to you, but I provide proof for anything that I tell any of my clients to do or any of you on this channel. So me personally, I will not buy any more real estate until rates go oversold. Now, if you don't understand what oversold means, I definitely encourage you to go take my free stock course, A to Z, everything that you need to know about trading. It is free on this channel. So you can go ahead and take the freedom through trading course. You will learn about all of these indicators, understand trading and investing a lot more. But me personally, I'm not looking to buy real estate until this zone right here. All right. This zone right here, when mortgage rates, which are at an average of 6.78, when they go oversold, which oversold essentially means that they are extremely cheap and it's a good time to be able to buy real estate at that point. So the last time that they were oversold goes from a period of around May 2020 to about February of 2021. Now, anybody who bought a house in that range is up a couple hundred thousand of dollars worth of equity right now. So you got to ask yourself, would you rather buy at that point or would you rather buy now? And then the market has to cycle back down to it being oversold. And then hopefully you'll be able to gain some equity then. Comment below, let me know what you think. But for those people who don't understand buying low versus buying high that bought homes in March of 2022, when mortgage interest rates were overbought, which means they're extremely expensive. I mean, you may have some equity, but at the same time, not only do you have a high mortgage that you're paying on a monthly basis, you may not even be able to get out of that house because you still got to pay a realtor. You still have uh, other closing costs that you might have to pay as well. So my point is this, when you take a look at what's going on in real estate right now, my predictions for the future are very simple. One, we are going to have a ton of supply continue to come online, right? The builders, which are always late to the party, they're still building a ton of houses. The people who have been locked in, like the lock-in effect, they've been waiting on lower rates to put their house on the market. And when rates go slightly lower from where they are now, they're going to say, okay, let's go ahead and put our house on the market, adding to the glut of inventory. And three, because of the place where we are right now, in terms of economic conditions and the fact that the Fed will eventually be dropping rates because of the poor or not favorable economic conditions, you're going to see prices come down in the short term. I'm not saying that real estate is going to crash. I'm not saying that 15 years later from now, real estate won't be more expensive. But what I am saying is that over the short term, there are going to be deals to be had because prices are going to soften over the next coming months, especially this fall. So if you're looking to buy a house, you should definitely get ready because this fall, you're gonna see some outstanding deals because of the amount of supply that you're gonna find in your local market compared to the demand and also compared to the previous years of what we've been seeing. So this is just another video to help you all understand buying low, selling high, how to make money, how to make thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars off your next real estate purchase. If you like this video, make sure you comment below, hit the like button, and then of course share so some of your friends, family members, coworkers, or et cetera, can be able to learn this great information that we and you more specifically have learned today. I'm the Market Genius, another deal close, peace.